So while I was at MAGFest last week and I got to hang out with a few of these suave indie developers, one of them in particular caught my attention with their game Magnetic by Nature, got to talking with the developer who openly challenged me to write a negative review of the game. Challenge accepted! And... failed. Game is pretty good. Shut up. So the concept is simple. You're a little magnet kid who's trying to save all your family members because you know Ohana means Lilo and Stitch. Hmm? What's that? More messages about me not talking about the plot? But what do you want me to say? This game is like Mario Brothers in that department. Bowser kidnapping Peach and these robots needing saving are there just to give us a reason to platform. Plot doesn't matter, so let's get to what does matter, shall we? The game is built around a simple attract repel mechanic. The game is pretty much played with your joystick and four buttons. I don't know if anybody else has picked up on this from previous videos I've made, but I enjoy the simple games in life. Not simple in regards to difficulty, but with regard to concept. The more mechanics, plot, etc. you put into your game, the easier it is to screw up. With only the one magnet gameplay to focus on, the game can grow entirely off of that rather than become a mess of several different things. You go from learning the basic movement and concept of the game to being truly challenged to push the magnetism to its limits. And OMG are you going to want to get moving in this game. This game definitely had speedrunners in mind when it was being created. And I won't lie, it got me killed more than a few times while I was having fun swinging around these levels like some sort of magneto-powered Spider-Man. But it's so much fun to do. Movement and momentum are fun things and this game knows that. The levels are designed for the most part really smart. When you're being introduced to a new puzzle concept, you're given a simple level that makes it obvious what you're supposed to do. Think of how in a Zelda game you tend to get an item and then have to escape said room by solving a basic puzzle with the item you just received. It's the same concept. For example, when you see the black sludge water stuff, the game gives you a very basic puzzle to fly above it and avoid the hazard. It guides you by placing the magnet links in certain positions above the hazards to say to the player, Hey, you know how we have you do that Spider-Man thing going from point to point? Yeah, well there's a reason we've given you those points over this pool of murder, because you might want to use it. That being said, it does have the problem of a mixed difficulty progression. I can breeze through level after level, but every now and then a random stage will get me stuck for about, oh, a hundred plus deaths. Think of it kind of like this. You're playing Mario for the very first time and strolling through World 1 without a problem when all of a sudden you're taken to World 8-2. You manage to beat that somehow, then you go back to the World 1 levels only to be thrown back into World 8 just before reaching the castle. It gets kind of frustrating. Another design oversight I noticed was a couple of levels caused cheap deaths. To illustrate what I'm talking about, take a look at the level Silent Cannon. The level wants to teach you that using multiple triangular magnetic points will increase your momentum and launch you quickly over great distances. That part works fine, the problem I have is there's a platform you need to land on that you have no way of seeing. You're hurled too high to get an idea of where it is, and on my first run of the level I just assumed I'd land on a platform at the end of the natural arc. You have to play around with your momentum to make it to the goal platform, which comes down to trial and error rather than skill. But aside from those couple problems, this is still a very good game. It's a bit on the short side though, you can finish it in a couple hours if the puzzles don't stump you for too long. It's only $9.99 on Steam and worth it. Pick it up.